It's an exciting day today. Snowcap, which is what we've been calling uh, Dottie's Buckling, is going to his new home in Indianapolis. So originally we were gonna fly him on a plane, but we couldn't get, we got the crate, we got everything, but we couldn't line up the temperatures because it has to be below 80 degrees for a certain amount of time in both areas where you're gonna fly him to. Uh, and we just couldn't get things to line up and now he's grown bigger than the crate that we purchased to fly him over there. So uh, we did arrange shipment with Tar Valley Transport and we've used him before when we sent uh, the goat over to weed him and reap. I think he does a great job and uh, we're gonna get him loaded up and get him in the car and get him off to his new home. Are you guys coming to say bye bye to Snow Cap? You coming to say bye bye to Snow Cap? Oh, we gotta go say bye to Snow Cap. Try, try. Cappy's ready. He's huh? a big boy. What's that? He's a big boy. Yes, he he's Cappy. Don't let him get anyone on the way out. Maybe he wants to go say bye to Dotties. Aww. Aww. Bye, Dottie. Dottie. Okay. Alright, before he goes, he's going to get a dose of Toltrazural. Toltrazural. Coccidia prevention and also a probiotic. Oh, Cappy. All I can see is his butt when I turn him around. <laughs> I can see your nice floof floof you got going on there. I really, I wanted to keep him. Yeah, we might have. We sold our best goats this year. We did. I think we sold our best goats. And we fail. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay because they're going to go and they're going to do well for other herds. And yeah. hopefully, you know, we get something just as good next year. Mm-hmm. 32 pounds. 32 pounds. Oh, Mavis. Say bye to Dotties. Oh, that's Mama. Oh, that's Mama. That's your baby, Dottie. Your baby. He's like, peace out. Bye bye. Oh, Trudy. Trudy, that's not your boyfriend. Aww. It's supposed to be taller than his. He's supposed to be able to stand up in it all the way, right? Yeah, he's standing up. Oh, he's gonna rub his head on there. See you later. Have a good trip. Bye bye. Oh. I just got notification that. The little dotty buckling that we were calling Snowcap, they named him Rainy Day. Super cute, coming from Oregon. Um, he made it, so that's great news, and that's exciting. But I wanted to show you guys the garden. It's it's right behind me, and it's crazy. It's the time of year when the garden has just gone completely wild. But I want to show you all the things. I kind of like a wild garden. I like things to reseed themselves and just go crazy so I will show you what we have going on back there so Jake built these for me these extra beds this year and this cute little gate but we have tomatoes these little and I've already been picking tons of them but these little yellow pear tomatoes then we have regular tomatoes and then, so you can pick from the back of it, which is kind of fun. Then we have a mint. We have artichokes. Another tomato that has just gone completely wild. Completely wild. Then we have the little sunburst squashes that we've been eating for a good four weeks now and some cosmos that i planted i thought these would be little bushy flowers but they just went crazy super tall then we have been getting yellow zucchinis 
And this is the other side of the tomatoes. Lots of tomatoes coming in. We have some carrots down here. Sunflowers, which we've already kind of, they've already kind of died back. Over here is the pumpkin patch that's completely weeded. But that's okay. We'll find the pumpkins. This was a seed that I dropped and I just let it grow. I think it's also going to be pumpkins. So those are all pumpkins. And then over here, this was all nice fresh wood chips and now it's got weeds in it. That was carrots and strawberries, garlic chives. This is completely taken over by like an ivy weed that I need to get in and pull. This was an onion bed and garlic. Throw that over there. And then we have cabbages. Asparagus back there. Which I need to pick those cabbages. And I did an okra plant which I've never even had okra, but we'll try it. And this tomato that is completely overgrown. Completely. Here comes Gertie. Gertie! It's time to milk. Hi guys! Chai Chai! I'm coming! It's the Mavis crew. Gertie, come on. Come on, Gertie. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> okay, we decided to do one more goat show for this year and it's actually a state fair we're two weeks out so we have to shave and bathe everyone that we're gonna bring and this is gonna be a, a long show so we've never done a fair show before and one of the requirements is you have to stay on site and basically have your goats on exhibition so on display for exhibit. the exhibition it is. I don't think that's the word. I'm pretty sure. Is it? So Mavis is a show pro. How many shows do you think Mavis has gone to? Since she was a little baby? Yeah. Man. At least... I don't know. A lot. Ten. Yeah. Okay, one thing I wanted to share with you guys, we've shared it in other videos before, but our pre-wash before we milk, and then a pre-spray, so we use a Dawn uh, dish soap and clean water, clean soapy, warm soapy water, and we will wash the whole udder first, uh, because they, they are out in the dirt, and there's hair, and all kinds of stuff just all over their udder, and we don't want any of that to be in our inflations. So we'll wash them real good with a soap and water solution. We'll do, then we'll rinse it so we don't transfer anything to the other goat. And then we will wash the majority of the udder on the other goat over, and then wash the other side of the udder. So now it's still wet from the soap. We'll use a uh, chlorexidine spray, like a pre-milk spray. We like the spray better, we found that the dip cups always seem to have what we would feel to be like bacteria in them still. So we spray, and then while they're still wet with the solution, please don't. While they're still wet with the solution and we have clean hands, we're gonna strip. We're gonna open the orifice, and we're gonna take a couple squirts into a strip cup. We're gonna make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to take a nice 
dry clean towel and we're going to dry off around the teeth first and the bottom of the, you know, around the udder and just make sure everything is nice and dry before we put the implant on. And that's our process and it really helps. It helps us as peace of mind just to know everything is clean and it really helps our somatic cell count which is something that you can get on the uh, milk testing paperwork. So, and that's another reason why we like to do milk testing because that will help you know your, the quality of your milk and make sure that your somatic cell counts that the goats are healthy and that the milk is good. Um, and so that's just our process and I wanted to reiterate that a little bit. Pre-wash, spray, strip, dry milk, and then we do a post spray. We will spray them after we're done milking with a fight back spray or another spray of the chlorexidine. The most important thing is to spray after you're done milking because that's when they're the most vulnerable. Their orifices are going to be open for about 20, 30 minutes. And if bacteria gets up in there, that's when you can get mastitis. So it's very important to spray them with something or dip them with something after you're done milking. And we like, there's kind of a method to the inflation. We like to point them forward at like a 90 degree angle when you first start milking. And then as the udder gets empty, we'll pull them down so they're pulling the weight down. This gives you the best milk out with inflation. You wanna hear that swooshing noise. Then, when you're done with the machine, we also strip out the rest of the milk. There's going to be a few squirts left in the goat. We used to not do this, but now we do this. It depends on the goat. Some yeah. goats will have a lot of milk left behind, and some goats will have like one or two squirts and that's it. All right, so now Mavis is all done. She's all milked out. Gertie's going. I've hand milked the rest of her, so we're just gonna spray a generous amount here. And I'll just let her stand and finish up on the stand and stuff, and that'll help keep that orifice clean until it closes up. Okay, that's it for this video. Our next video will probably be us at the show or we're also going to talk about our breeding plans for the breeding season. We are holding back Mavis and Dottie's breedings and maybe Trudy's until end of November so they're nice and fresh for the Oregon Adga National Show. Well, the Adga Nationals that are going to be held in Oregon next year that we plan on going to. So we're going to be breeding them a little bit later, but we will talk about who we're breeding them to and why. And the pairings are already up on our website. A lot of the reservations for does on Mavis and Dottie are already full. Um, but you can take a look if you're interested. So Mavis is freshly shaved. Chai is freshly shaved. We still have like six goats to go. Mavis?